So in our recent podcast series about uh, notable executions across Canada, we've been talking about uh, cases involving the Northwest Territories. Now in the history of the Canadian Territory, there's only been three executions for murder in its existence. Two of them came in the 1950s, and of course the first was the Albert Lebeau case in 1921. Now the information we're providing today is uh, repeated uh, courtesy of the nwttimeline.ca website and uh, the information is uh, provided as a, as a public service to inform people about uh, that era of the Canadian judicial system. Now, uh, 1954, the case of uh, uh, Fred Cardinal eventually became the last execution in the territories in 1954. Now, from 1867, which was Confederation Year for Canada, through to Canada's last hanging in in December of 1962, there were 710 people put to death in Canada for murder. Capitalton punishment was heavily debated for many years across the nation and eventually taken off the books in 1976, primarily because of the Truscott case, where a young, uh, almost preteen, was sentenced to be executed for the alleged rape of one of his uh, companions. Now, like I said, in Northwest Territories, there were three executions in the territory. Albert Lebeau in 21, Victor Beaulieu in 52, and uh, Fred Cardinal on June 1st, 1954. Now, it was more than a year prior to that date, the date that Fred Cardinal was charged with murdering his wife, Mary Rose Cardinal. Now, Fred and Mary Rose were residents of the Arctic Red River at the, what it was called at the time, where F uh, Fred was an RCMP special constable. On the morning of May 7, 1953, Cardinal came into the Arctic Red River RCP detachment and claimed that his wife had died during the night of natural causes, apparently because of a heart attack. Now, Consul Kama Kamamaki, the officer uh, in charge of the detachment, then went to the Cardinal residence to investigate, and he found Mary Rose lying in bed with no obvious signs of how she died. Friend, Fred then may, began preparations for the burial. Constable Kamimaki began to suspect that this might not have been a natural death after all. Residents of Arctic Red were claiming that Mary Rose was prior to her death in good health. So Consul Kamiaki decided to call in a sergeant from Akliavik. With the only radio, radio in Arctic Red River or Red broken, Kamiaki was forced to make a quick dog sled trip to Akliavik, and he returned by plane with Sergeant McLaughlin and Dr. Otto Schaefer. By the time he got back, Mary Rose's funeral was about to begin, but Dr. Schaefer insisted on making a close examination of the body, and he found blood coming from her ear. It was obvious that Mary Rose had been shot. A trial held in Aklevik in July 53, and the Yellow Knife in January 54, jurors heard that Cardinal had been having an affair with a woman in Arctic Red, and also heard how he had confessed to the murder on several different occasions, and to numerous individuals. Now, Cardinal's defense, handled by an experienced lawyer from the South, was based on a claim that Cardinal didn't remember committing the crime and was temporarily insane. The jury spent what was described as much less than an hour to return with a verdict of guilty as charged. The uh, judge sentenced Cardinal to death by hanging, and he was led to the gallows on June 1, 1954, in Fort Smith, Network Northwest Territories, uh, ending uh, the execution, uh, uh, ending the uh, the uh, the era of execution in the Northwest Territories. Now, I don't know if he's the only RCMP officer that was executed in Canada for murder. I have to have further research, but it was kind of uh, weird where a police officer officer that would uh, represent a force that would. Uh, garner information towards an execution was executed himself. I leave you with that. Uh, sometimes uh, crimes of passion uh, lead to uh, numerous negative results. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing here, give us a like, comment, subscribe. We're only doing this as a public service, not to uh, to exploit the case, but just to present the information of what Canada's execution process for murder was like in the 20th century. We don't touch the uh, the 19th century because I really don't know if uh, some of the executions were based on uh, what do you call local law, local jurisprudence. But after I think 1921, where the BNA Act was uh, seemed to be 
more uh, prominent, we're seeing more executions, like that era between 21 and 62, which is the last major era of executions across Canada. Thanks for listening. Bye.